All right, it's nine o'clock here in Phoenix, Arizona, 11 Eastern Standard Time, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. <clears throat> My name is Janet Larson Meyer, and I wanna welcome you to this morning's Team Genesis training. Let me begin with a few announcements. We'll be having our regularly scheduled Wednesday night webinar on December 26th. We have something really special in store for you, the best of 2018, featuring our best guests and their compelling stories. Also, we'll be having our training as usual on Saturday, December 29th. We're not letting off the gas as we roll into the new year. As we look back on an extraordinary year in CTFO, now is the time to begin setting our goals for an even better year ahead. 2019 will be a record setting year for this company and it'll be the same for you and me if we take the appropriate steps to capitalize on this once in a lifetime opportunity. Today, Executive Vice President Klaus Urbanek is going to share with us an easy and effective way to set realistic goals. Since Klaus was a little boy, he's set goals and then done whatever it takes to achieve those goals without fail. His track record of success speaks volumes as he's grown three million dollar organizations throughout his 30 years in network marketing. This morning, we have the chance to shortcut our learning curve on how to adopt and apply the critical discipline of setting goals by listening to what Klaus has prepared for us. Klaus, thank you for being here. Take it away, my friend. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you for having me on this training and thanks everybody for showing up. Uh, Let's uh, talk about the power of setting goals for your personal growth in CTFO. Last week, we had uh, and we heard Roland Rascon, Senior Vice President, talking about his vision for 2019 and what's uh, in it or can be in it for all of us. And for our training today, I do want you not to make uh, notes as we usually uh, do or want to do. I really want you to feel and listen uh, what I teach you today. Let me start by saying, I believe in goals and goal setting. And my first goal I set in life, not really knowing what I meant, I did when I was just 12 years old. And I wrote on a piece of paper next to a picture of a beautiful home I glued on it that I'm going to live in my own home by the time I'm 30 years old. I kept that goal sheet in my wallet, pulled it out, read it often, sometimes daily. Then, when I turned 30, I threw it away, but only after I bought my first home. You have to understand, I was the first in my family to live in his own home. All other family members back in Germany rented the place they lived in. Well, I was introduced to network marketing about a year later, where I learned all about goal setting. We all have heard this saying before. The past is like using the rear view mirror in your car. It's good to glance back and see how far you've come. But if you stare in it for too long, you'll miss what's right in front of you. And a lot of people do that. And we can agree to that. And Tony Robbins said, setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. That's very true. Remember me with my gold sheet as a 12 year old and the home I wanted to live in by a certain time frame? It was invisible, or better said, untouchable for me at that time. But my actions over all those years gave it life. And finally, I made it visible by being able to buy that home. So if it comes to setting goals, guys, you must first think about what it is you want. And I'm not talking about your needs. What you want, what you really want deep inside, then write it down, make a plan to accomplish it, including a time frame. And read your goals out loud, hopefully daily, so it becomes part of your subconscious. Did you know that we are always just one choice away from changing our life for the better? Simply put, your life today is what your choices have made it. You can't deny that. And with new choices, you can change directions this very moment. And setting some realistic goals are a big 
part of that. That's why we do this training today. We always hear about that we need to set the goals. And yes, we do. It's true. We must set goals and then create a plan, a plan of action to reach those goals. Now, since it's the end of the year, let me be clear. Goals has nothing to do with the New Year's resolutions. Those are cheap. Those are too broad. And because people don't spend enough time to do them, they are made to be broken shortly thereafter. We all know that. Goals should be worked on all the time. Short-term goals, long-term, life goals, business goals, big goals, small goals, whatever it takes. They also can be changed. There's nothing wrong with it, especially when we start making goals for the first time, as we don't know what may show up one day, what challenges or obstacles we must deal with in the future. Things that are part of business and life. Just be ready for it. Yes, some people from all walks of life do set uh, goals, sort of, kind of, and they do it because somebody else told them to do it. However, they don't really write them down and look at them regularly or read them out loud and daily. What most people do is they keep them in their minds where they, the goals are nicely packaged, secured and protected, right? But never really pursued. If you truly want to accomplish a goal, any goal, and as I said, it doesn't matter how big or how small they are, you must put it on paper and share them with somebody that you trust, someone that can hold you accountable. It can be a spouse, it can be a good friend, it can be even a business associate. It doesn't matter, just share it with somebody. And it's a fact that people that have written down their goals and read them often are more successful in life and in business than those that do not. Let's talk about the definition of a goal. And I looked this up. A goal is the objective of a person's ambition or effort, an aim or desired result. And I like to repeat that. A goal is the objective of a person's ambition or effort, an aim or desired result. This is what Jim Rohn said once about goals. There is no telling what you can do when you get inspired by your written goals. What you can do when you believe in your goals. What will happen when you act upon your goals? Guys, this is powerful stuff. I want to ask you a simple question here. Have you ever tried to plow a field? You probably have not. Well, I know I haven't. But if you do, and you don't look at a fixed point on the horizon, your rows will be all over the field. And guess what? The same is true in your life in CTFO business because without keeping sight of a specific goal, you are likely to wander off course and ending up where you don't want to be. Yet, knowing all this, less than 5% of the population set goals the right way by writing them down, sharing them with a trusted person that can and will make them accountable. So why do you think that is? Why do less than 5% of the population set goals? Here is what I learned over the years. It's hard work to set goals. It requires time and soul searching. And if you have a goal written down or not and say, I want to become an executive vice president by the end of 2019, that's not a goal. It's maybe a wish or a dream. Also, the reason why people don't set goals is People fear failure. Let me tell you, if you don't set goals, you can fail. That's very true. But there's a twist to this. And that is that you can't succeed either, right? People fear success. Now, some people don't value themselves enough to feel they deserve success, even though they already are successful uh, in their own way. This is when people stay inside the box. They're afraid to venture out and do something new, something different. 
Now here's one for you. If anyone of your personally involved associates or you finds himself saying, I don't have enough time or I don't have enough education or I don't have the experience, I don't know anybody or I don't really like sales, understand that these replies are all excuses for not needing to do anything. Think about this. If you aren't successful in your CTFO business as you hope to be by this time of the year, did you plan to fail? I'm sure not. I want to share with you my six principles of goal setting. Number one, clearly define your goals. And we talk about smart goals here in a minute. Number two, set out your strategy. You have to plan your work so you can work your plan. How can you work your CTFO business if you don't have a business plan? What, how, by when, with whom? We all know that a dream written down with a date attached to it, that becomes your goal. And now your goal broken down into bite-sized pieces or steps, that becomes your plan. And finally, your plan backed by your actions. Make your dreams come true. So you can have everything right, but if you don't, you don't act up onto it, nothing will happen either. Number three, plan out your problems. Identify them, fix them, and move on. Always keep in mind, in all kinds of business ventures, obstacles or challenges are built in every opportunity, including CTFO. We all must be willing to work through them to succeed. Here's a big one, number four, built in rewards. Meaning every time you reach a goal, reward yourself, you earned it. So no goals, no rewards. But if you have goals, then you want to include your rewards with your spouse and your kids. Now you might not think you need to reward yourself after achieving a goal, but hear me out. You will not have your best year ever without celebrating your achievements along the way. And if you don't pause to celebrate your accomplishment, you will eventually lose your why for doing CTFO business. And if you lose your why, you won't have uh, enough fuel in your tank to reach some of those bigger goals ahead of all of us. Number five, relate everything to a time frame. Attach a date to your goal, not an open end. I want to involve 500 people next year. That doesn't mean anything. Last but not least, don't confuse activities with results. We all know that. We can keep ourselves busy all day long. Enrolling new associates and customers is the lifeblood of your CTFO business. I call it revenue or income producing activities. Make it a habit, guys. So no matter how you feel today, tomorrow, next week, next year, get up, dress up, and fight for your dream. Let's get more into details about our SMART goals or the SMART goals I like to apply. They can be broken down in five steps or five parts. S-M-A-R-T. They are specific. Goals need to be detailed with a clear action plan to follow. If you don't have that, those are not goals. Goals must be measurable, must have a means to measure it exactly what by when. And beside that, you want to know what the uh, rank advancements mean. Goals also need to be action oriented. They need to be aligned with your purpose, with your vision, with your why, and always create urgency. Do it now, don't wait. Don't procrastinate, don't be a mediocre. Make it a habit. We all know habits are very hard to break, good ones or bad ones. And the R stands for realistic. Your goals must be in reach for you according to your experience and in balance with the time to devote to your CTFO business on a weekly basis. Now, to uh, get to Vice President 
we all need, uh, know we need to have 500 associates with a minimum qualifying order. That is $49.99, right? So if your average order is higher than that, you may only need 400 or 250 people. Another way to uh, figure it out is if you have 125 executive managers or any one person that can create $25,000 in team sales, and you most likely will hit vice president as well and earn anywhere from $300 to $700 or more a week in residual income. The T in the SMART goal stands for time base. You must have an end date to be accomplished by, not open end. Guys, the only limits we all have are the limits we believe in. This is a quote from Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. So don't lose sight of your long-term goals with the short-term decisions. Now let me talk about the belief. Goals also have to do with believing in yourself because everything starts with believing in something. Well, you this morning believed that you wanted to be on this training. And we believe Monday mornings, if we have a job, we need to get up, up so we can go to, to a job, right? And some things simply have to be first belief to be seen. We all heard that too when we prospect. Well, I believe it when I see it. Well, that's not how the belief cycle works. If you believe in CDFO, our CBD product line, our business model, your upline support team, and most importantly, if you believe in yourself that you are ready for this business, now your belief cycle kicks in. If you haven't done it live, you want to listen to Norma Johnson's recording from last Wednesday. Her belief cycle kicked in. And this means you see yourself advancing to executive manager, vice president, senior vice president, and beyond. And that will create action. And now you do what it takes. And with patience and persistence, you will hit your goals, which will lead to better health, fitness, and of course, a check, what we all are looking for. And the check and improved health, when you get it, will make you a bigger believer. And you invest more time in your business building efforts, resulting ultimately in reaching your goals and the desired success. Now, to find out if the belief cycle works for you, well, you must apply it. All I can say is I can help you reach your goals but only if you have a big enough reason why and core desire to reach your written goals. You also must be teachable and be able to follow directions. And finally, you must allow me or your upline support team to make you accountable for your actions. Guys, here's a success tip we definitely want to apply. Don't tell people in your team. Teach your team what to duplicate. And don't manage, lead your team to success. There's a great reading about motivation and goal setting. It's by Jim Cairo. It's a very simple book, but great to read. I read it several times over my years. Now, the lifeblood of your CTFO business is prospecting, recruiting, and helping new members to place their first order first. It creates excitement. And while you build your team, you will find new people you can duplicate our simple system to. Now, let me share with you a simple goal that can and should be duplicated. It literally is very, very simple. Many people are much, much faster. So get enrolled for free. That's the best part, right? And then start working on your contact list. Who do you know? I hope you already have a contact list uh, ready. Now place your first order first, 49.97 minimum or 47.47 on authorship, which is recommended as we all want to automate our business. Sometimes people ask you that, why should I go on authorship? Well, it's, it's very simple. Don't you like to automate your business? Oh yeah, I like to. Well, that's how you start but you always want to continue to work on your contact list. And you hear me saying that a couple more times. 
Then you enroll four associates with a qualifying order. A realistic time frame would be in one month or one associate with a qualifying order per week. That's all we ask. And continue to work on your contact list. Now, to have your first four associates with a qualifying order on the books, well, you may need to enroll six or 10 or 20 or even more. Especially at the beginning, you have to figure out what your enrollment score is. So what's an enrollment score? If you enroll 10 people, for example, and you get 10, two orders out of 10, that's your enrollment score. That means you have to enroll 20 people in order uh, to become an executive manager because we need four active associates that will qualify us for that. But always, uh, you know, study the rank advancement document in your back office under library. So you know when you start as an active associate, what it takes to get to first level manager, second level manager, a senior manager, and then executive manager. Ask yourself, based on your experience, how long will it realistically take me to hit executive manager? Will it be one week, four weeks, three months? It doesn't really matter because it, because it depends on you, your experience in marketing and in sales, how big your contact list is, how many hours you're willing to work your CTFO business per week. However, always continue to work on your contact list. We have people, they even made executive manager in one day. And then people ask, how did you do that? Well, obviously they have more experience, put more time in it, and they have a bigger contact list. But at the end, it doesn't matter how long it will take you. Just get there. Now, your next goal should be, after you hit executive manager in your second month or through your second month, to help just one of your first four active associates to qualify for executive managers themselves while you continue to enroll your second set of four active associates with a qualifying order. Now, if you do that, now look at these numbers and it's all realistic. In your first months, you enroll or you have four active associates that qualifies you for executive manager. Your second month, you have eight active associates plus two executive managers. Your third month, you have 12 active associates plus four executive managers. Your six months, you have 24 active associates personally enrolled, those are all personalists, and 32 executive managers. And guess what? After one year, and this is in a perfect scenario, you have just about 50 personal enrollees, but you also have over 2,000 executive managers. We all know that's in a perfect world, but if you only have 10 to 15% of that, you will hit executive vice president. Almost guaranteed, guys. Now, CTFO's comp plan after qualifying for executive manager is basically based on sales volume first and rank advancement second. And that is great for us because we don't have to jump through any hoops. We just focus on, on sales and growing our uh, team that way. The most important rank in CTFO is the executive manager. And if you duplicate executive manager, it's only a matter of time as to when you hit VP. And get this. Prospects can see themselves enrolling four active associates to hit executive manager. There's nothing else to it. And again, 500 with a minimum order get you to VP, or 125 executive manager gets you to VP. Or if you have any one super recruiter that builds a team with a sales volume of 25,000, or a mixture of all, and you will hit VP as well. Each and every one of us have the chance to enroll those kinds of entrepreneurs. We just never know who we attract into CTFO during our prospecting efforts. It's a reason why some grow faster 
than others. And guys, I ran a marathon. And once you run the 26.2 miles, some of them finished it in two and a half hours, others finished it in five or six hours. Guess what? Once we uh, run through the finish line, we all feel the same way. We did it. So it doesn't matter how long it takes you. But remember one thing, your success is based on the orders you have on your books, not the numbers of enrollees. It doesn't matter if you have a thousand people on your team, if you only get 10 orders. I can show you somebody who has 50 people in their team and they have 20 orders and make more, more income. So it's all about orders. It's not about the number that you have on your team. Consider that as part of your goals in 2019. Our network marketing business is the only free enterprise for anyone who has a passion for our business model and the CBD product line. But you must be strong as the beginnings to great things are always the hardest. And when you feel like quitting, as we all do sometimes, think about why you started. Did you know that successful people, assuming that their timing is right, they make a decision fast and they change their minds slowly as they understand the realities before success in business. And they don't give up after their first little challenge in the effort to grow their business. While unsuccessful people make their decision slow and they change their mind fast as they often want to be convinced. Now, we don't really have that here at CTFO as our business is free. However, if they think it's easy to do or free like our business, they are in, no problem. They signed up in numbers. And if they feel it's too hard to do or too difficult to build for them, they pass or they don't even communicate with you anymore. We all have them on our teams. I call them free riders or deadbeats. As all they do is occupy space in your back office or waste your time. They only registered with you because it's free and in the hopes that you will build them a business. I have to give them a message. Sorry, guys, it's not going to happen. Just remember, there's a difference between interest and commitment. If you are merely interested in doing something, you do it only when it's convenient. And we know that. However, when you are committed to something, you accept no excuses, only results. That's how you reach goal. So make sure when you enroll somebody, you ask your new enrollee what their commitment level is in building a CTFO team. You want to know who you can count on, but you don't depend on nobody. That's up to us. Now, while making your decision and creating your goals, you must know that the road to executive manager, VP, senior VP, or executive uh, VP is never a straight line. It never meant to be. Why? Because you can't increase your success or sales without the effort of your team, of our team. And we know things happened and our road uh, is uh, to the next level or to the next success is always uh, full of sharp curves and potholes. You will have rainy days and bad weather that slows you down. And often obstacles are laying in your way that slows us down. And sometimes even people throw them at us. Learn how to deal with it and move on by focusing on your why for starting and doing your CTFO business. Think about it. What drives you in life? Think about it. What is important to you? Think about it. What gets you off the couch to act up on your goals? Believe me, and I speak from experience. If you don't have a strong enough reason for doing the CTFO business, your why deep inside, your passion for doing it, then doubt will kick you out at one point, guaranteed. And in closing, I want to say, Guys, there is a special power we all have in us. It's the power of the first circle, which is you, me, and everyone we add to our teams. 
you are like the seed of your own health and or money tree. And you must nourish and care for the seed and make it grow as big as you want it to be. Not as I like it to be for you. Of course, I'm here. We are here. Janet and myself and many other leaders are here to train, support you, and give you guidance. But you must make this first circle, this shining star in you, work. We all have to do that. And that means we need to lead by example with a team spirit. Don't teach others what you haven't done yourself first. Duplicate the system we are using, the simple system. Don't gossip negative stuff with team members. Be there for your team if you have something to offer. Empower your, associate, your active associates on your team. And don't join all kinds of Facebook groups that can be counterproductive for, for your goals or personality or even confusing at times. Forward the emails and messages, messages uh, uh, to your team that you receive from uh, CTFO or your upline leaders. Get involved and get engaged in your business, guys. Participate in our team calls, webinars, and trainings we have regularly. And don't wait for your upline to tell you what to do. It's your business. This needs to be part of your goal-setting strategies and decision and will ultimately be part of your success. Remember, people do what you do, not what you say. I wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a super successful 2019. Thank you for showing up today, and let's start 2019 with a bang. You are prepared to go all the way to executive VP before 2019 ends next year. Good day, everybody. Have a great weekend, and we see you next Wednesday on an amazing year-end webinar.